Uh, my name is Luke Johnston. I'm a postdoc working at the Steno Diabetes Center in Aarhus, Denmark. Um, and I'm going to be talking about uh, some, some teaching and education that I've been doing here in Denmark, um, trying to shift the, the research and science culture towards more openness and reproducibility. Um, so you can, I hope you can see the, the slide change and everything. Um, so this is actually the first time that I've uh, talked to a bunch of trainers. Uh, so this will be quite interesting. Uh, uh, normally it's other researchers. So it, I've taken a little bit of a different approach to this. Uh, and I'd love to hear like just general comments in, in general. Um, okay, so if you want to see the slides um, at another point or to be able to click some of the links, the, um, the slides are available in the footer, like the link is available in the footer of each of the slides, so you can go to it at any point. Uh, just a quick overview, I'm going to be talking ab uh, about the um, key points that were in the blog, uh, the abstract on the Life Science Trainer website. Oh, and I wanted to say also thanks very much for the invitation as well. Um, Okay, so back to the back to the outline, uh, and then I'm going to be talking about the introduction to the course, uh, and then who the attendees are. I'm going to go over some of the key principles that we use while creating and updating uh, the course. Some of the lessons learned that uh, tie back into the the key points, and then a little bit of our experience with teaching this course within Denmark. And then we're going to end uh, with a quick summary again of the key points. Uh, before I begin, um, just a little bit of some caveats about this. I'm, when I, these, these points in particular are assuming that the learners are, uh, are full-time or working in some way in research, and that includes PhD students, uh, and not necessarily in, a, in an undergraduate setting, and more specific to like uh, more practical data, science, data analysis type skills. So that's just some caveats out of the way. Uh, the key points, they're already on the, the, the blog, the, the website, so I'll quickly just go over them here. Um, I'm going to be talking about, or the key points would be, uh, have the material be online and easily found and try to follow it exactly as much as possible. Encourage participants to instruct future workshops uh, and provide them with onboarding documentation and support. Uh, really emphasize the code of conduct and the safety of the learning space and then embody it. And then finally, uh, use and weave in reading, listening, doing and discussing activities within, within the class. So now for the course itself, um, there might be some difference between like North American versus uh, here in Denmark, course can be a couple of days to a couple of weeks. While in North America, this would probably be classified more or like referred to more as a workshop. But so I'm going to be saying um, course from now on. And that's for PhD students and postdocs uh, doing biomedical research, uh, largely diabetes research. And this course is three full days composing of five code along sessions where uh, the instructor types and then learners follow along. Uh, and there are a few uh, lectures uh, and then also a group project. So if you want more information, the links are provided in this slide. So you can go to them at, to get more information about the course. So I've been teaching these sort of topics for quite a while, ever since my master's. But this specific course, uh, I started during my, my postdoc. And uh, it's, uh, sorry. And it, uh, I did it because there was a huge need for these computational skills, as we probably are all quite aware of. Uh, and also because there, there was, a really lack of awareness around reproducibility and open science, which uh, I wanted to change that. So most of the talk will be about these key principles uh, about developing the material and the, the things learned from the feedback. So I'm going to be largely talking about this because they kind of form the foundation for the entire content of the course. So the first one is, of course, like using evidence based uh, learning on, on how learning works and teaching best practices when building up the material. I would say the first one is uh, probably, probably the most important. Uh, and like any sort of research or 
anything you're trying to build uh, and improve on, you need to be able to get data. And in this case, it's feedback. So get data, get, get feedback often. I've made a, a Google Forms survey to, that asks generally what worked and what could be improved. And I get the participants to finish, complete it at the end of each day. Uh, and then I take that information and fix up, remove things, keep things and so on. So it really forms the, the basis for everything else. Then because learning requires multiple different angles with repeating basically the same information in slightly different ways until it gets remembered and then stored into long-term memory. Um, in this way, uh, we've, during the course, we do uh, a bunch of different things uh, like learning activities, hands-on exercises, and so on. Specifically, I want to talk about reading though. Um, reading is one thing that, so one thing I found while doing the, the courses is like, if I'm talking about a concept, there's always some variance in how I explain it each time I run the course or how the other instructors might say it in that particular session. And we have a lot of people who are in, uh, English as a second language here, it, it's Denmark. Um, and while they speak excellent English, sometimes there's like things that don't get conveyed as well. So the, the amount of information that you can convey uh, orally is much less than what you can do uh, through reading. And by getting them to also read in class, it slows us down, uh, which I think is really important because it's so easy to talk fast uh, when you're doing these things. So then after they've read the section, then uh, the, then we have the instructor briefly go over the topic again and just verbally reinforce that concept. So based on the feedback, we really see that this is something that they really like. Um, this is really strongly tied to uh, the learning outcome and making sure the narrative is really tight and strong throughout, always tying back to the, to the learning outcome, specifically sort of like the less is more uh, sort of idea. And brains can only handle so much information at any one time. So like keeping things as simple as possible and repeating them is really important for the learners afterwards to remember what was actually taught in the course. And actually every time we've ran the course, we've stripped down more and more uh, information. And related to this is actually the idea of not deviating from the material. Because every single time I've deviated, deviated from the material because I'm excited or it's like something I'm like, oh, this is also a really cool thing to do. Um, they, 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 in the moment, they see that's quite interesting, but in the feedback, it's always, um, please stick to the material because like they often use the online material as a reference as throughout the course. So like if they get lost or they fall behind, they can always go back. But if you deviate, they can't use that as a reference. And so that consistently, every time I've deviated, uh, the feedback is like, don't do that. So really don't deviate and stick to the plan. Um, le lectures, I, we, we really try to limit the lectures for certain concepts just because lectures are really not good form of conveying or of learning for, for learning. Uh, but we use them for like more ranting type topics. The, based on the feedback, we, they love ranting type topics. Any type of like ranting about like the state of science or like all the problems that are in academia and all that stuff, they, they, they really, based on the feedback, they love it. So we always keep the, the lectures for more ranting type stuff. And I also love to rant, so it's, it's very easy. <laughs> Uh, the next principle is related to making sure that the material is uh, maximally used and reused, and that's by applying an open license, so like a CC BY license, and then making sure that it's easily accessible online. And I think that this is a little bit of a misunderstood area, uh, at least within universities. A lot of universities, their courses aren't publicly available, and I think they think that only people who take the course or attend or pay, at least within the context of Canada, where I'm from, um, the, they pay for the university. So I, th I think they have that idea that, that it's theirs. Um, and I, while I understand that idea, I think it's a little bit of a shame because people don't take courses for the content. There's already so many online online uh, on the open resources available for for learning stuff uh, online they take the courses because they want to be taught they want to be taught by somebody um, and they come for the teachers and they come for the experience and not the content so i think that's really important and based on the feedback we really see that this is a very strong consistent positive message that they love that they can use the resource 
while during the course what is so that if they fall behind they can always catch back up and afterwards they can come back to this course uh, come back to the material and refresh what they've learned this is something i think is really important uh, is establishing and maintaining an environment that is safe and supportive for learning and having that like explicit code of conduct on expected behavior of everyone involved uh, and having that at the forefront and having instructors like embody this attitude is really, I think is, is really important um, because learning is so dependent on the learner's motivation uh, and interest and engagement with, with the content that if they, they don't feel like they're safe, they won't learn as much as they could. So I think it's really important uh, in this particular case. And it's so easy to use dismissive language like simply or hand waving a topic away when you're teaching, but that can like really undermine learners' confidence and trust in themselves. And I think this is particularly important for underrepresented and minority groups within science. So like as an instructor constantly self-reflecting um, that this is really vital to making sure that they feel uh, safe in this space. Um, lastly, that the material for this particular course isn't just designed for the participants, it's also designed for future instructors and contrib contributors. So since it's written with the idea that uh, learners will read, uh, read it during the course or afterwards, this also means that new instructors um, can take the material and read through it as if it was exactly uh, what is gonna be showing during the, during the sessions. Uh, and that makes it easier for them to like sort of get onboarded to what they're going to be teaching. Since almost all of the instructors were also past participants, aside from myself, because um, I first started the course, uh, this has really helped a lot of them to come in and be like basically ready for, for teaching. Um, and throughout the text, there's also messages to the instructors. There's also the, the instructor guide. So I, I hope that with uh, with the way that it's structured that anybody can take the course and teach it, try to teach it for to themselves, to others. Okay, so enough with the key principles uh, and I, uh, I got to go a little bit faster here. Um, here are some like experiences we've had with, at least within Denmark on the course. So we've, we run the course through the Danish Diabetes Academy um, here in Denmark. And that's, it's an organization that provides funding, networking events, educational events, and uh, courses to diabetes researchers. Um, and they collect uh, evaluations for the course, uh, for the course, for courses and their events and all that stuff. Uh, and both this course and the intermediate one are some of their highest rated uh, and most in-demand in courses they offer. So it shows that there's a huge need for this and they, they're they engaged in this, um, this content, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, and then combined with the, the feedback that we get, we can really see that, that this is something that they, that they value and they recommend it often to their colleagues. Uh, if you wanna look at the, some of the feedback, uh, we have it all, um, available in our GitLab repository. So that's on the link there. Anyway, so I could, uh, as I was doing this, like preparing for this talk, I, I realized like I could easily go overboard in time. And I think I'm already a little bit overboard, but I could talk about this for a long time. Um, but just to summarize, um, uh, to recap the key points, have the material be online, follow it exactly, um, encourage participants to, to instruct future workshops because that's also a great way for them to learn and to solidify their knowledge and it uh, makes sure that this this type of information is continued uh, you know exponentially and by providing them with onboarding uh, documentation and support uh, then emphasize the code of conduct make it like central uh, and making sure that there's safety within the, the space to learn and really as i said before like really embody it and then use and weave in uh, reading, listening, doing, and discussing in class. Um, I would really like to hear if, if anybody does try out the material or read through it or anything, I would love to hear some feedback on it. Uh, uh, we'd love to improve on it in, in any way. Um, thanks for listening. <laughs>